Hi, my name is Amy, and um, I know a lot of you through the training that we had done recently, um, but I did want to talk with you and help you understand your OmniGuard 5 pressure monitor. Even though y'all did not buy them from Icarus Solutions, um, I don't mind uh, helping you and kind of telling you the best way to make this uh, product function for your hospital. So um, I'm going to do that in hopes that, you know, it comes back to me. Um, anyways, long story short, you guys are a great entity, and I would absolutely love to help you learn how to use these better. So we're gonna start from open the box to all the way to how to get the cell service um, so that you can receive uh, alarms and notifications of the uh, pressure recordings even while you're off the job site. So we'll go through all that and um, just bear with me. I know this is kind of a makeshift video, but I did want you guys to understand the product that you are utilizing for infection control compliance. So when you open the, um, the pressure monitor, you'll receive some tubing. You'll also receive the cord. Now, and just so you know, and I'm gonna tell you this up front, if you are running a project, I would highly recommend do not count on the battery life. The battery life of this is about four to six hours on its own. So I would highly recommend that you plug this in um, when you are using it. Um, also the printer, if you're a safety officer or someone's coming around to do rounds, um, you it will not work unless this is plugged in. So I just wanna let you know that if you want the printer to work, um, your printer right here, um, then you're going to want to make sure that this is plugged in, okay? So you'll open your um, pressure monitor, manometer out of the box, and you'll have a little yellow piece of paper. This yellow piece of paper is important because it tells you thank you, but it also tells you when you're ready to activate your OmniGuard cell service to visit a certain website and register your monitor, and then you submit the activation form. And then no matter if you have Verizon service or not, you receive two free years of Verizon network service for this machine once you activate it. And it will then call you, even if you're not on the job uh, or at the job site, and let you know if you know something's alarming, if the um, pressure differentials have changed, things of that nature. So definitely, um, this is something that you want to keep. I'm also going to show you at the end of this video um, our board here, and I've wrote all the things that you would need um, as far as if you need help, if you need to activate the cell service, if you're looking for how to transfer your job log onto your um, PC at the hospital, I have information for you on that. So I'm going to show you all the things that I'm talking about um, in writing, so you can pause this video and then be able to um, to take a look at those things that way too. So, okay, so that's in there when you open it. You'll also come up with your manual. This is a super easy manual, you guys. Like if you, I know it's hard, you guys have so much going on, but if you ever have time just to go through it, I mean, it looks really long, but the back end is, um, you don't even need the last three pages. Those are for different types of auto dialers and things like that. I don't think you need those, but if you do, then that information is in your manual as well. But the most important stuff we'll go over today. All right, and then also this is gonna be in there. It's gonna be folded up and it's gonna say it's your NIST Certificate of Calibration. So this is gonna tell you, and I just opened this monitor today. So this is gonna tell you uh, when the, the certificate um, was done for this particular machine that you're gonna be receiving and it will tell you um, when it needs to be done again. And typically you do it in a, in a yearly basis. Um, you're gonna have DNV, you're gonna have Joint Commission come in and they're gonna say, hey, um, can we see when that monitor was last calibrated on some random whim? And you're gonna be like, yeah, no problem. And I also wanna show you when you get it, and I know you know you have office personnel that can do this, um, I would open this and I would go ahead and write your serial number. It really helps when I'm helping you get your certificate of calibration to know what serial number you have, when you purchased it, and um, who it's registered to. So, and also, we're gonna talk about this um, in a second, but there is a uh, password protection on these. I would write that in here. You never know. You never know who's gonna know it, who's not gonna remember it, and I would highly recommend you put a different password on each one, um, but I would definitely write it in here and just keep the manual uh, somewhere handy in the office in a file or somewhere. All right, you're also gonna come, it's also gonna come with um, a cord like this, so this cord, okay, and I'm gonna try and show you the best way I can. There's a sticker, okay, and it's gonna show you right down here, there's a sticker. If you remove this sticker, this cord goes into the little, it almost looks like a phone jack cord, and um, you're gonna be able to put this cord in the bottom. The top is a USB port. 
This one is going to be so that you can take this cord and you can transfer data from this pressure monitor onto your PC, okay? And before you do that, you do have to go in and you have to go into um, www.omniguard.com and you have to look for the communication software download. And um, once you have that on your computer, um, it will then go into, uh, when you want to download all your readings, it will go into like an Excel and you can keep up with it that way on your computer. And that's great to have for documentation purposes. So that's that cord. And remember, it's at the bottom. The bottom one with the yellow sticker right here, because I get so many calls on that, is where you plug this in to transfer your data from this unit to your PC. Okay? All right. So we'll hit that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. So you guys are smart people. You know that you obviously hit the power button. And um, if you ever notice right here on the OmniGuard 5, there's like a little felt, um, almost like a gasketing right here. That's where you want your cords and your power cord to run out of whenever you're closing it up and it's being used for a job. So that's why you see the little felt there. It's kind of helping it um, not to squeeze so hard on the Pelican style case. So obviously we've turned it on. I'm trying to just initialize it. Give it a second. While I'm waiting for it to initialize, just so you know, your serial number is gonna be found at the bottom, right below that yellow sticker for the cord that um, transfers data. That's your serial number right there. So if you ever wonder where it is, it starts um, with the letter C followed by six numbers. So you wanna keep this handy uh, when you wanna do your certificate of calibration. Okay, so the monitor is on and it's obviously, um, preset, or I'm sorry, this is this is actually the tutorial. So it came on and went straight to the tutorial. Now it's on the, the reading. So it's, it's obviously in neutral mode. There's no negative or positive pressure being pulled on this machine right now. But I want you to see, so all you have to do is such an easy machine. So this is touch screen. So all you have to do is hit the numbers and you're gonna, it's gonna take you to a menu. Okay, the menu is very, very easy to read. So I'm gonna turn this around so that I can hit the buttons that I need to, but I'm just gonna show you, I'll turn it back to you so you can see what to do, okay? So your first is your general settings. All right, so we're gonna hit general settings. All right, and so at your general settings tab on your monitor, you're gonna be able to set your normal operation log rate. So how often you want it to log, okay? So this one is the normal operation is set for 15 minutes. If you want anything to change on this screen, you have to hit the white writing, okay? So you would hit that 15 and you would have to enter your current passcode. Now, I've set this passcode to 1234 but a master passcode for this machine, any of them, is 5555. So if you're trying to do something to a machine that's already activated and you can't figure out what, what the passcode is, the manufacturer's passcode is 5555, okay? So on this one, you hit the numbers, one, two, three, Four is what I said it. And you can always, whenever you do anything, your enter button is this arrow right here. So the arrow that looks like it's kind of like a reverse or whatnot, or take you back arrow, it's gonna be what you hit to go to the next screen, okay? So now normal operation. So now it's changed to 30 minutes, or you can do it all, or you can make it five minutes. You want every five minutes you want it to log, every 15, every 30, or off, okay? So if you have it off, that means you're just using it for negative pressure while you're there and it's probably not gonna be logging too many readings. But we're gonna keep it on the standard, which is 15 minutes. Um, alarm condition. So do you want the alarm to um, come on and how long do you want it to come on for? So one minute, uh, two minutes, uh, 15, 30, one minute. So you can kind of change all that. So typically um, we give a 15 second on the alarm condition. Okay, you can actually set it up here to have your name. So you go and you delete your name. So you'd go back, like in the backspace here. 
and you can change it. We'll just put Jeff's name in here since he needs this info. Okay, nope, not Jed. Or is it Jim? I think it's Jim. I know y'all are laughing at me. It's okay. I Jim. Okay, so we'll just use Jim for this. And you can, like I said, you can always hit this go back button. All right? And then over here, you'll have the time and the date. It should be accurate, okay, based on when you get this machine. But if it wasn't, again, you would just hit the white writing, adjust the arrows up or down to adjust your date and time. But it always should be typically right. Now, I will tell you this. This comes from and is made in Seattle. This is on... Pacific time. You are going to need to change that time. So I would definitely make sure that that was something that we changed as well. All right. So that's under your general settings. So general settings, you're going to be able to change your contractor uh, name, your normal operation as far as your log rate, how often you want it to log, and alarm condition. Okay. So then we're going to go back to the other screen and you'll have screen settings. Okay, and you can obviously do your brightness. I think it's fine the way it is, but you know, you can always do that as well. And you'll have to calibrate your screen um, as well every so often if you, if you want to do that, um, just to make sure the touch screen stays accurate. All right, so you have zero calibration that you can do. So you'd have to disconnect the tubing and you can, you can calibrate your own machine is basically what this is doing. I'm not gonna do that today. This is a brand new machine, but you can calibrate your machine if you want to. Here's your password protection, okay? Um, this is gonna be your passcode that you're gonna enter. So you hit on the white. So it says enter current passcode. Again, you guys saw that I changed it. It's one, two, three, Four, you hit the space, a new password. This is if I want to change my password. So if you want to do it, you got to do it twice. So you're going to go in and let's just say we change it to 1122. 1122. Two, two. Enter. It's going to ask me to do it again. 1122. Two, two. All right. So guess what? My new password saved. Everything's good. We're moving on. And on the printer side, it's just going to kind of tell us what's going on every so often, um, that things that we change. So that's our password protection. Again, if you get to this screen and you're like, I don't know what the password is, who changed it, what they used, 5555 five, five, five will get you back to a different password. And I would highly recommend you do that for um, job sites. All right, so you can erase your job log. You have to obviously enter your passcode. Um, but I, if you want to erase everything on here, all your job logs, you can do that um, for a new project or whatnot. Um, and then you can obviously restore to factory defaults if you needed to do that as well. Um, I would recommend that if it's a totally new project. Um, otherwise, those two things never need to be touched. So. All right, so that's that. And then if you want, you can also go to tutorial on view now. Y'all, this will tell you everything um, right here. So just for time's sake, I'm just gonna kind of go over this. So this is your current pressure reading, which you obviously knew that. Um, you're gonna have your, um, the border is gonna tell you if it's in positive, like where you want, not positive, but if it's where you want it to be, if it's in normal range. Um, if it turns red around the border on the sides here where it's green, um, right here, um, it's going to be going into alarm mode. Okay, let's go back. Okay, this is the alarm. This is where we set it, but I don't know why it switched on me. So we just hit that there. Tutorial. Sorry. Not quite sure what it's doing. Okay. So this is um, your alarm settings is here. Oh, it's because I touched it. So that's where you, we're gonna adjust our alarm settings. We're gonna get to that in a second. But anyways, going back to the border. So border, when it's red, it means it's going to alarm. Yellow is a warning and green means good. So obviously it's where it's in the range that you want it to be in. Um, you have a battery on the bottom after the alarm settings. This is gonna show you like what you have it set to, whether it be negative point 
0.025 or you know to one or whatnot. So this is your main screen, just so you know. This is gonna be your alarm settings. You can hit it, you can adjust it. If you want it to be like, you know, a lot of people say, hey, negative 0.03 is the new standard. So you'll go in, you'll have to hit your password. And remember we changed it, one, one, two, two. Okay, that's not gonna work. That. And now I'm changing it, you see? I'm changing it to negative 0.03. Okay, that's where I want it to be. Um, and then my alarm two, where I, where, you know, what the other alarm that is that I want it to be is, or the range is negative 0.05. That's normal for negative pressure. Typically, I see these stay for most hospitals here. Negative 0.025 down to negative 0.05. That's super negative. So, um, but that's a good, good little range to, to stay in for negative pressure. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so um, we've got a printer, so you can keep your printer on or you can turn it off. I personally like to keep it on. Um, you can obviously make it print when you want it to print. Uh, you can view, and these are just things that your printer would probably have printed so far. So let's just print it just so if someone asks. This is a job report, job name. And I put um, CHKD in here earlier. Your contractor's Jim. You could put the supervisor if you wanted to. I mean, you can put all of this information in there. It's gonna tell you what your readings were. All right, so, and it tells you the date and the time, what mode it's on. Uh, we entered a new password, the printer we turned off, then we put the printer on, and then that's the end of that report. Okay, so bear with me. I'm gonna go back. All right, and so you have, there's the printer, then you have the alarm. You can make it alarm or you make it not alarm. Okay, that's up to you. It's whatever is gonna work for your job site. Then right here, is going to be where you would go to when you want to do your cellular downloads, okay? So once you do get this all connected and basically for your cellular communication setup, you're going to log in to www.engsolinc.com. You're going to fill out the cellular activation form and then you need 24 to 48 hours and then this machine will automatically be set up and you have to go on here and you go into network um, at the top, you see network and off. So you go into cellular, because where it said off, you'll hit cellular. And then right there, um, you'll be able to um, tell it if you want it to go to cellular or Wi-Fi. Okay, that's two separate things. So, or off. What this means is that it's going to communicate with this person, whoever you put in here, um, and give it a uh, job status, like what's the status and what's the log. So it will give, give you your continuous reading at your 15 minutes, um, or it's every 15 minutes, or it's gonna give you a log, so for the whole day, what the log was. And it's gonna be sent to this email address, and this is mine, um, and then in that person's name, okay? So if you have it set to the Verizon to call, to call your cell phone, you'll hit it to the cellular, and if it's um, if you want it just emailed to the hospital, someone at the hospital, you can set it to the Wi-Fi. Okay, y'all. That's basically.